Hi, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your service. I know it sometimes feels like a thankless job. I live in the courthouse district. I'm a born and bred Virginian. I started out on the east coast of Virginia, and I found Floyd County, and I said, I love these mountains better than I do the ocean. And my grandmother's from West Virginia, so maybe it's in red somehow. But I am a Sierra Club member, and I'm very much at odds with the New River Valley Sierra Club right now because I don't think this is a good idea for Floyd County. I do support industrial wind farms off our coast. Virginia is blessed with incredible wind power off our coast that would do it all. It's not being harvested. They want to drill oil off our coast, and my friends on the coast would rather see windmills over there. So I'm confused as to why that's not happening. Floyd is in a position to really do some great renewable energy stuff that's clean, that's green, and doesn't disturb the quality of life here. I would encourage everybody to look up biochar and pyrolysis. There's a little town in Austria that's positioned just like Floyd that has a booming economy and booming jobs because they are producing their own energy this way. We could do it here. So I would really encourage everybody to look up that biochar and pyrolysis. Thank you. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably the most important point I wanted to make is no one likes to be told what we can and cannot do. I agree with that. However, I've been in Richmond a lot, and I know for a fact, if our local elected officials do not make the ordinances, Richmond will. And it's a heck of a lot harder to change something in Richmond with all those lobbyists crawling through the hallways. You really need ordinances here that are made locally. Thank you. I'm at where I'm good out in the Valley District, and uh, I'd like to say a few things about them, two or three things. That I, but uh, one thing is this month, and what we've had a whole lot of wind. And I probably lost a thousand dollars more than that because I didn't have any towers. <laughs> and uh, the way I look at it, if I want to put one on my in my field or something, that's my business. It ain't none of all, none of y'all's business. As long as it's legal and all, I think I'll be able to do it. But y'all might can stop me on that. But now I can tell you one thing: if either one of you ever come over there to me and jump on to me about something or I'll bust your nose. <laughs> Thank y'all and maybe y'all will sleep on that a while. <laughs> John Cundy, I uh, will take a little, I'm a supporter of renewable energy and we'll take a little different tack. Uh, I wish that the Virginia, state of Virginia would come up with an energy plan that said to every county, develop the renewable resources that you can within your county. Then that would avoid the situation of people saying, oh, I want energy, but I want it to, to be do, uh, generated someone else, somewhere else, and delivered to me. And if everybody has that viewpoint, nobody has any energy, because none gets generated to me. But if the plan is for every community to generate renewable energy within their borders, using the best option they can, then everybody will benefit. Uh, when you do a local energy source, like wind energy and like bioenergy, there was some reference to that just a minute ago, then those dollars are gonna stay within your community. They don't go somewhere else. Right now, all of the energy dollars in Floyd County are going somewhere else. It's a benefit if they can circulate within the county. Thank you for your time. Uh, good evening and, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I'm Jonathan Miles, I'm a professor of integrated science and technology at James Madison University and I direct the Wind Energy Center at JMU and I'm a resident of Albemarle County. And I want to just start with a disclaimer. I am not a stockholder in a wind company, I am not a consultant to the wind industry. Uh, the work that I do is strictly funded by the state and federal government and our intent at JMU and this Wind Center, which has been together for over 10 years now, is to provide resources and tools to communities such as yourselves and help 
uh, promote the responsible deployment of wind energy across the Commonwealth. Very clearly, uh, from having sat here tonight and listening to dozens of very articulate and thoughtful expressions of opinions and some facts, uh, wind energy is driving the process. And what concerns me is that uh, there's talk of protecting power lines and television transmission and cell towers and the like, and essentially the potential for outlawing wind energy. And you've heard from a number of people this evening, wind energy is not a black and white issue, but the ordinance that's been proposed would treat it as such and would essentially prohibit it. And if nothing else, I'd recommend at least considering a means for regula regulating very carefully uh, what again I would term the responsible development and deployment of wind energy. Siting is a complex process, it requires a lot of research, a lot of understanding, and, and uh, I know you all have put a lot of work into this, I think there's a lot of work left to be done, and I speak from experience having supported a number of counties around the state for about 10 years on this topic. I've heard tonight uh, a number of people say, I'm in favor of renewables, but I support wind energy, but uh, I think wind energy is a good idea, but, and I, it really concerns me, I've got two young children, I expect to have grandchildren someday, uh, I don't want to be making excuses now for their futures, and I think we do need to make some changes. I promote wind energy, I promote all sorts of different renewables, efficiency, conservation, and so on. And every energy source has its risks and its impacts. Fires, explosions, the like, look at nuclear plants. Look at fossil fuels, look at mines, etc. There are accidents, no doubt about that. But you have the opportunity to write a regulation here that is very carefully constructed and protects your safety, protects your health, protects your economic interests and so on in the community and doesn't outlaw a technology that really is ready for prime time and performs remarkably well and reliably. I would encourage you all to research the issue very thoroughly, very objectively, do invite wind companies to come to town and be transparent and open and share their experiences. Do go and visit wind farms. Uh, you heard someone say that employees have to wait for wind turbines to shut down before they can go inspect their plants. Not true. Uh, we brought, brought a group of about 40 to Mount Storm this past summer and we stood underneath rotating turbines. And again, I can assure you they're safe and they're not very noisy. And do please consider inviting communities who have had the experience to visit you and share those experiences. Some will be positive, some will be negative, some will be middle of the road, but you'll hear from the people who have actually dealt with this up close and personal. Uh, let me finally uh, finish by saying that I do come bearing some gifts. I've got some information here that we prepare for communities such as yourselves. Eight copies of that, I, I encourage you to have a look at it. And an invitation to contact us. My business card is in there. And please give us a holler. We'd love to come back down here, give some technical presentations, reach out to our contacts at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, to the Department of Energy Headquarters. We have tools and resources. We can help you look at the county and determine what is and is not appropriate. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kathleen Inglesby, Courthouse District, and I have to say, I'm just really proud of Floyd County tonight. I, I think everybody really loves Floyd County. Everybody cares about Floyd County. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. And, and you know, we got a good thing going. Um, I have to, I have to say a couple of things. One, I know that there are wind, some wind companies that do restrict employees. I think that's just is one, uh, and I will confirm the, the uh, company that does that within, it, it's either 13 or 1,500 feet. Uh, in, in addition, I understand that um, uh, from conversations with people at our electric utility, that small wind in Virginia, as uh, previously written by one of our, um, in one of our Floyd magazines, is not bearing efficient fruit that the wind, uh, small wind customers are not very happy with the production levels. It's, it's still a, a, an expensive technology and they're not there yet. Um, but I am here in support of the regional land ordinance. It's become clear that the county otherwise is traveling without a toolbox. We're unable to review or even consider our local priorities in the face of unplanned and 
large-scale industrial development. I very much agree, as said at the last supervisor's meeting, that there's a complex issue to be looked at here. There used to be a popular slogan, don't mess with Mother Nature. I think it was for a brand of butter, but, but now a seismologist has attributed a rare Ohio earthquake to natural gas fracking and the uh, wastewater disposal. Years ago, the construction of the John Hancock Tower in Boston, because of the weight of the building, lowered the water table in the city. And an MIT scientist has connected increased drought conditions with local climate to air agitation and wind turbines. It's called the Lorenz, or butterfly effect, and it's also been recently confirmed in China. So what would Mother Nature say to all this? Well, there are over 100 primary water sources, springs, shallow wells, branches, and creeks that originate on Wells Ridge. That's between Route 750 and Route 8. And we know from expert geological research, as recently presented to the Planning Commission, that Floyd County's water sources are easily and permanently impacted by shifts in the underground fractures. We know that ridge lines recharge groundwater through the layers of the saturated zone into the fractures of the bedrock. But I was surprised to learn how interconnected all those fracture zones potentially are. It's possible for one pollution event to contaminate a multitude of wells for miles around. It's possible for one disruption or blast to block or divert residential water sources. All of these fractures kind of crisscross underground and link to one another in ways that are impossible to predict or to chart. And they've tried. It's, you just do not know. There's no way to know. So a pollution incident during construction could have an impact of major magnitude on the surface, groundwater, and potentially and irrevocably damage the ecology. So a tall structure ordinance specifically addresses the need to protect our natural resources and specifically, our most important, our water. Thank you.